Before we go any further, I know some of you are watching everything you missed and you haven't actually watched the live action remake that Disney made of Pinocchio. And I want to say I've watched every live action that Disney's made so far. And I think Pinocchio might be the best movie that they've ever made. So you need to go watch it. If you have Disney Plus, there you go. But there are a few cuss words in the movie, so you might want to watch it before letting your little ones watch it and decide if that's for you. But don't worry, there's no cuss words in this show because we're better. <laughs> Okay, that's long enough of a disclaimer. Let's cut the strings and uncover everything you missed in Disney's Pinocchio. Okay, now you're gonna see a bunch of Disney movies that get cameos in Pinocchio, but first I wanna point out a pattern I'm seeing here. Luke Evans was Gaston, the bad guy in the live action Beauty and the Beast. Did you honestly think she'd want you? <laughs> And now he's the coachman, the bad guy in the live action Pinocchio. The coachman is also the bartender. Are you still a bartender if you only serve root beer? But Luke gets his own Easter egg. When he's singing, trying to convince Pinocchio to go to Pleasure Island with him and all the other kids, you hear him sing all for one and one for all. Afraid of having fun, it's all for one and one for all. Now there's so many versions of the Musketeers that's been made and they're all like the same thing. But all of them have the same line. What about the motto of the Musketeers? All for one and one for all. All for one and two for two. And get this, Luke was also Armist in the Three Musketeers. That guy. It's all for one and one for all. All for one and one for all. If you take a look at Honest John, you will notice his cape is actually a window curtain. He also takes a stab at Pinocchio for being made out of pine. But Honest John isn't actually wrong. <gasps> Thank heavens. You must be constructed of pretty sturdy oak. I'm pine. That's why I'm called... Oh, yes, pine. Well, it can't all be constructed of quality lumber. <laughs> Oak's hardiness, which is how much it's squishy, is almost double that of pine. Speaking of pine, remember Chris Pine? I've got it. Chris Pine! Well, he's a real person, and you've probably seen him before if you saw Wonder Woman. In Wonder Woman, he was Steve Trevor, and Gideon, his sidekick, also has their initials carved in the mallet, Gideon and Honest John. Hmm. Now let's check out the apple thing. Ever wonder why you give an apple to your teacher? This is an apple for your teacher. This is buried in our history, back in the oldy days of the American frontier. Basically, the teacher would rely on the community for their food and their housing, and in exchange, they would be teaching their little brats. And back then, apples were the most common thing that people had an abundance of, so they got apples. And if you wanted a better grade, spice things up because who wants to live on apples alone? Give your teacher like a steak, or a yummy sourdough loaf of bread, or a donut. Okay, I'm getting hungry, I gotta stop. Back to the video. But watch the teacher. She's at the rear of the rope line, making sure all the kids stay on the rope. But then, just a few moments later, where did she go? She's nowhere to be seen. We don't get to see Geppetto play the accordion in this one, even though he played it in the original one. But if you look closely, you will see he had a violin in both movies. Maybe the violin was owned by his wife. <laughs> Another movie that had both was 1968's Pippi Longstocking. Both Pippi Longstocking and Pinocchio tied brushes to their feet and mopped the floor. They also couldn't pass up on this cheeky little joke either. Whoa, yeah. excuse me, ma'am. If you remember, this is a call out to the original movie. Uh, uh, I beg pardon. <clears throat> if you don't speak Italian, you may not know what sapone means, and I don't speak Italian, so I don't know what it means either. But wait, I went and Googled it for you so you don't have to. It means soap. So Jimmy the Cricket is literally giving his soap box speech on a box of soap. But the original one, he was standing on a box of matches. Seems like Disney wanted to pull back a little bit and make it a less flammable prop. Another thing that changed to be more PC is smoking cigars. And who's giving out the cigars? And now they are just drinking root beer. And did they give this girl fake food? Because literally none of the food is going in her mouth. If it was my guess, she's probably not eating it because they have to retake these scenes like a dozen times and she probably already ate a dozen donuts. Now let's go back into Geppetto's little storefront slash home thing that he's got going on. If you keep a close eye on the wall, you will see Roger Rabbit and his wife, Jessica Rabbit. Now this was nice of Robert Zemeckis to include them in his movie, since Who Framed Roger Rabbit include Pinocchio in their movie. Hold up, wait a minute. 
Something ain't right. Robert Zemeckis is actually the director of both movies. Now we have a picture of a boy that is believed to be Geppetto's son who inspired him to make the doll in the first place. And this is probably because he was so lonely. But why isn't there a picture of Costanza assuming to be his wife? Probably because this movie takes place in roughly 1826. And ironically, the first picture in history that was ever taken was in 1826. And unless this guy is Geppetto's kid, then I really doubt that he had a photo of a kid. Sorry to break it to you, so then what killed his wife? Well, in that time era, it was more likely cholera. And that was responsible for hundreds of thousands of deaths. Bring out your dead. Oh look, Pinocchio, there's more pictures from the wrong era. But before we go cuckoo, let's go back to the cuckoo clocks. Back at the AOK -okay Corral, we have Woody from Toy Story riding Bullseye. And in case you didn't know this, Tom Hanks voiced Woody in Toy Story. And he's the guy that's playing the character Geppetto. This bee that is coming out of the flower is straight out of the original Pinocchio. Then we get a whole fun house here. There's Donald Duck running from a crocodile. It could be the crocodile from Peter Pan, but I think it's just a reference to his own cartoons as he's tangled with crocodiles several times before. But look at the bird coming out of the box. It's not just one bird, but three. And it's actually Huey, Dewey, and Louie who are Donald Duck's nephews. We're not done here. If you look in the background, you'll see Rafiki throwing Simba off a cliff while Zazu sits on the rock and watches. And that's Archimedes from Sword in the Stone. And Dumbo using his big ears to fly away from the circus. Then we have Maleficent and her sidekick Diablo watching as Princess Aurora is still touching spindles. The mom spanking your misbehaved kid is also a cameo from the original cartoon, only now the government likes to step in and tell you how to raise your kid. <laughs> and here's the queen giving Snow White a deadly apple. Hmm, maybe that teacher should think twice before eating her apple. It did fall next to poop. And there's also several of the seven dwarfs. The drunk guy is a callback to the original also. And the drunk guy isn't actually late though. The problem with that one clock, it talks too much. If you watch when the time goes off, he's chiming in as well. He just sees double. There's another Easter egg in Geppetto's house. If you look on the stairs, you will see Bambi hiding behind his mom as his dad is about to get shot. Something that doesn't even make sense to Geppetto, let alone us, is why doesn't he sell his cuckoo clock? Now it's literally advertised on his sign out front that he sells clocks. The only reason why he doesn't sell them is to dramatize the sacrifice that he makes to go find Pinocchio. He needed to get to Pleasure Island to look for Pinocchio, so he sold all his clocks and he bought a boat. As if going out in this little boat isn't enough of a sacrifice. But why would a woodcarver who can make this go out and buy this? Wouldn't he just build his own boat? And he sold that many cuckoo clocks and all he gets is this? Either he got ripped off selling the cuckoo clocks or he got ripped off buying the boat, but somehow he's getting ripped off. The little ballerina side story was fun, but there's no way that she spins like that without any outside force spinning her, like back in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. If you watch during their little puppet performance though, you'll see several backgrounds falling down. One of them should look awfully familiar to you. That's Princess Aurora's castle, and you can also find that at Disneyland. Okay, now watch the background closely. First it's the city, then it's the castle, then it goes immediately back to the city, and then it goes to the castle. But it didn't transition to the castle. Clearly, this is a mistake from Disney. The show was mighty spicy, we thought we ought to warn you. And if you think this scene is a little bit kinky for Disney, let me remind you that back when Walt was alive, we had the wonderful world of color. We're talking the 60s here. And at the Golden Horseshoe Review, they danced the same exact way. So just like the storyline of the movie, there's really nothing new here. <laughs> but oh, psh, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get a little hate for that one. When they are in the well, it seems like a magical blue light is glowing in the well's belly, but it's actually probably bioluminescent algae. Wow. Which is a real thing that glows when it's touched. So you'll see it when it washes up on shore or bumps against somebody or something like Pinocchio. Thank you to the members for supporting the show. We appreciate you. If you want your name up here, click the little join button. There's also hidden videos only members get to see. Let me know what movie you want to talk about next and you could be featured in that next video. But until our next adventure, gents and gentlets, remember most importantly of all, share a smile, they are contagious.